This video is sponsored by Anchor Solix. Electric cars are one of the most exciting pieces of technology out there today, but there's a foundational piece of them that is becoming useful in general, batteries. Portable power stations are a great way to ensure you can power all of your electronic devices, but they have many other benefits. Today we're going to talk about one of the most exciting power stations on the market. Anchor has been producing portable power stations for a long time, but now they have decided to transform and bring the world their new custom energy solution, the Anchor Solix F3800. This is a suitcase style power station with 14 ports, a 3.84 kilowatt hour capacity, 6,000 watt output capacity, and more. There's a lot to talk about and test, so let's get into it. At this point, when looking at home backup battery solutions, there are small ones that can power small to medium devices, but up from there, you typically have to upgrade to an entire home solar install with home batteries if you want to back up large appliances. That's where the Anchor Solix F3800 comes in. It's a simple solution you can buy yourself, but it can handle much more than portable power stations typically can. First, let's break down the device itself, and then we'll run it through the ringer of tests. We'll charge everyday devices, charge an electric vehicle at 240 volts, run my washer and dryer off of it, and much more. The Anchor Solix F3800 has a new bi-directional inverter that supports 6,000 watts with 120 volt and 240 volt dual output. That means that a single unit can power multiple home appliances at the same time. It's able to last as long as it does thanks to its 3.84 kilowatt hour capacity, which is expandable up to 26.9 kilowatt hours when adding six expansion batteries. I have one expansion battery and it integrates perfectly on top of the F3800. Additionally, you can combine two units with 12 expansion batteries to increase your total capacity up to a whopping 53.8 kilowatt hours. That won't be necessary for everyone, but the ecosystem that makes these easily expandable is incredibly nice to have. Rather than buying a battery and selling it once you need more capacity, you can simply chain them together. For EV charging, this can charge your car at 240 volts, which could help a lot in specific emergency scenarios, giving you around 15 miles of range for a single unit alone. With expansion batteries, this grows. This could be a lifesaver for you or a friend getting to the next fast charger on a road trip. For RV trips, it has NEMA 1450 and L1430 ports, and one station can run all of your appliances there. A typical portable power station can help out here, but will be device limited, but the Solix can handle everything at once. It's a fantastic way to replace dirty gas generators, and clean energy can power your entire home via the existing inlet box and transfer switch. Whole home battery backup is an amazing technology, and it's usually something that's only available with a long, pricey, involved install. The Anchor Solix, on the other hand, is the world's first portable power station, PPS, that supports AC coupling. With their home power panel, the F3800 can work with solar panels on the roof and the grid simultaneously for whole home power cycling. You store up self-generated electricity during the daytime and then use that electricity for your home at night. This is how you can save money on your electric bill. You can power up in three steps, buy the battery online, hire an electrician, and have them install it. It will only take a few hours, you'll get 80% of the experience that typical home storage systems provide, and it will come in at half the price. Not only do you have backup, but electricity optimization through the app, helping you to save money on the electricity you use each day. So the app does far more than give you simple controls, and it really takes this product to the next level. While some batteries are made for occasional use, the Anchor Solix F3800 is built to last. Their InfiniPower technology is designed for 10 years of daily use, reliable for 3,000 charging cycles. The core electronics are industrial grade, helping them last six times longer, and smart temperature control ensures the batteries stay healthy and protected for the entire life of the product. There are many ways to use this product, and 14 ports will ensure that you are covered no matter your needs. It has six AC outlets, offering 120 volts and 20 amps, one 240 volt 30 amp outlet, one 240 volt 50 amp outlet for an EV, two USB-C ports at 100 watts each, two USB-A ports at 12 watts each, and one car cigarette outlet at 120 watts. For recharging, it fully supports solar at 2400 watts and can be used with your existing solar panels for optimization. Or you can charge from an AC outlet at 1800 watts, taking around 2.4 hours. As you can see, this battery pack offers a lot, so let's see how it actually does with all of these tasks in the real world. So here's the main F3800 unit, clearly powering up for us right here, and I'm at 25%. So to do all these tests we're gonna do, first I'm gonna charge this up two different ways. One is with AC power, 
just straight from my wall, and the other is with this solar panel that is 400 watts. So I'll take the included AC cord, plug it into my wall back here, and then plug in the unit itself, and let's see how long it says it's gonna take to charge. 1700 watts. It's gonna take about two hours to charge this up. One thing I almost forgot is to add on right now the expansion battery so that we charge this one up as well. So I'm just gonna put this on top, take out the connector and connect it properly. And then I assume it should just automatically start charging it up. But let's see, there it is. So now it's telling me it's gonna take 3.8 hours because there's an expansion battery down here times one, 25% is what that charge level is at. So now it's gonna be 3.8 hours to charge up this completely and this one at 1700 watts. Behind me is where I record drums and behind the camera is where my computer and everything that runs that setup is located. It's really nice to have this whenever I need it, but that all stops immediately when the power goes out. Let's see if the Solex can save this session. All right, so I have the battery right here, and this is my big Amaran light. So let's see, plug that in. All right, now we have light for the session. So now we have light, but of course there's a lot involved for me to record here. So I'm gonna have two tube mics. The rest of the mics I think are powered through the interface, which obviously needs to be powered. And then I have the interface, two monitors for my computer, my laptop, which probably can't last super long unless it's charging. So we'll have that plugged in, my studio monitors. And then I also have a TV right here since my screens are very far away. This is what I'll run Logic off of. We're totally up and running now. I'm recording eight channels and I can see it right here on this TV that's powered by the Solix. These mics are powered with power supplies directly to the Solix and my computer, monitors, interface, everything involved here is powered by the Solix, even this light, which is really impressive and it's really quiet as well. If you had a really quiet session, maybe you would just put this outside and run extension cords outside. But for my purpose today, this is doing great. On the other side of my studio though, what if I need to make a Tesla video and the power goes out? Well, right now I'm using the Anchor Solix to use all of my normal setup. I have a light over here. This one is powered by battery, but my monitor is plugged in. My camera is plugged in via USB-C to the front. And even my backlight is plugged in all working seamlessly on the Anchor Solix F3800. Sometimes there's pretty pressing Tesla news, so this is a very nice backup to have whenever I need it. Now we're up here in the mountains and I wanna test a few different things. I have the main anchor unit with me as well as an expansion battery and a solar panel. First, I wanna charge devices that I use every day that I normally would have no ability to charge when coming out somewhere like this. My MacBook, an iPad, an extra iPad mini just in case, and my iPhone. At the same time with those, I'm gonna charge a device that's usually a little difficult, a water kettle, and see how this handles it. And then we're gonna take it to another level by charging this car itself. After that, I want to recoup some of the energy taken by the car with the solar panels I brought with me. First up is going to be the MacBook, and I could use a brick like this that is meant to charge fast on a laptop, but let's just try direct USB-C into the unit itself so I don't even have to bring a brick like this. Normally I could expand with two more USB-A's, but I didn't bring USB-A cables, so I'm just gonna use a brick on the other side for my phone. We're still at 95% power, so for a task like this, this battery has you way more than handled. Let's make this a bit more difficult and add the electric water kettle to the mix. I'm a tea drinker, so this actually getting up to 212 is kind of important. And let's see if we can do it. Looks like we should be totally fine staying on thus far, but it will start pulling real power in a second here. I just checked it's at 157 degrees, and this is pulling about 1100 watts. So that's something a lot of batteries like this cannot do, but this is definitely doing the trick and we should get boiling water relatively soon here. 
my Tesla Model Y is at about 55% charge, and for me, I'm just gonna be topping it off with this battery and seeing how much we can get out of it. And then also how much we can get with the expansion battery. But this is gonna come in super handy for those who maybe didn't plan well enough for a camping trip or something and really need this range to get to a fast charger or to have some kind of safety buffer there. The Tesla mobile connector is what a lot of people charge with at home using a NEMA 1450. And what's great about this is that this has a NEMA 1450 right on it. So this is the Tesla mobile connector right here. And for most people, they're gonna have this and then inside will be two different plugs. There's your standard outlet plug, which you could charge on this with. And then there's the NEMA 1450, which is gonna do it at 240 volts. I wasn't able to find my adapter today, but I have another NEMA 1450 charger that I'm gonna charge with. So let's try that out. For proper EV charging and optimizing this for an EV, you actually just press this button twice. So first I'll turn on the unit itself, and then I press the on switch over here twice, and then it switches to a special EV charging mode with the icon indicator on the screen itself. Here we are running at 24 amps and it's showing me about 5,440 watts or so. The main unit is at 75% and the expansion battery is at 100%. And it's telling me it will be able to continue charging the car at this level for about an hour. So outside it says 0.9 hours remaining and that's because that's how much charge the battery can do. But this is set and says three hours and 50 minutes remaining if I were going to my 80% charge at the current 24 amps. So we're gonna be able to get up to about 61% charge with starting at 55%, we've already gained 1% since the time I've been charging here. It's pretty amazing to see 240 volts going into the car all from a stationary battery that is completely separate from anything. I'm not connected to my house or anything. It's just sitting here. But now I wanna see how quickly I can recoup some of this charge with solar panels. So let's set that up. So this is pretty cool because this is a total mobile setup right here for solar panels. They can do up to 400 watts and right now I think they're pulling something around 60 and that's because it's towards the end of the day. It's about four o'clock right now so the sun is about to set fairly soon here. The sun was setting there so I wasn't able to get the top wattage out of these solar panels but now it's the next morning and I'm set up in my backyard and let's see what I'm getting here. Looks like 318 watts right now. And then I can adjust the angle of these. There's three different angles on the back for the stand. Throughout the day, as the sun's changing, I can make sure it's getting the optimal angle. But right now it says it's gonna take about 10.4 hours to charge this up from 24% all the way to 100% at 318 watts. If a power outage happens, one of the more annoying things involved would be if you're in the middle of a load of laundry. So we're gonna simulate that right now and run a load of laundry in my washer completely off of the Anchor Solix. Still charging up over here. Still going strong at 339 watts and 37%. That load is going in the washer. And then once I get to the dryer, if it's NEMA 1450, or if I have an adapter to go to NEMA 1450, I'll be good to go. The Anchor Solix F3800 is a powerhouse and can handle any and everything you throw at it. For me, I love technology that I can set up easily myself, and this provides exactly that. Join the Anchor Solix F3800 on Kickstarter and get up to a 35% discount. Enjoy exclusive benefits as well when clicking the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.